Oh, I made two videos of the collection of goodies I got from the scrapyard. A lot of different things there, as seen in previous video. And I did a rant on gun control, which people should do, really. Get up there instead of turning into this uh, social media. Like, 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 and an occasional comment. Are they scared like rabbits? People these days? I don't know. Programming through the media is carrying the voices of crazy politicians. Maybe they are scared like rabbits. Hmm. That was a nice trip, sunny across the great California, fields of green and brown grass, the Petaluma scrapyard, yeah, there, and other scrap places. <coughs> Okay, well, let's see what I was doing. Put the stuff away in different locations in the machine room and the armory and other places. Good to get good stuff. Got a wonderful little motor. Vintage direct current motor and relic. Which works fine, actually. This is sitting at uh, scrapyard for where are we here? Mm. That, I suppose. Yeah, that's up there. It was covered in uh, dirt, and basically that's all that was wrong with it. It's a vintage heavy cast DC drive motor brass tag on it, very heavy. It was a freebie, and they thought it didn't work. It was just simply not used, and I couldn't turn the shaft. I thought it didn't work either, so loosen that up really quick with oil, and uh, it runs perfect. I'm going to test a 9-volt battery and see if it runs as well. Nice and smooth and very quiet. And then I got this one here, which I've taken apart. I'm going to try and reverse the uh, rotation of it. Explosion-proof motor. And this thing is a mystery item. It's all solid bronze, by the way. I didn't know that. I don't know if the scrap people knew it. I didn't know it some kind of strange thing right over there isn't it uh, hard to tell with iPads that guy and then those great capacitors turned out great too make a, a, making a various trips uh, down there over time, get more caps and high voltage gear. Mm. Where are we here? Oops. No, not yet. Okay. Something else going on here. Whoa. Dropping this light. This won't stay up there. So I'll just get this motor reversed polarity. I think replace that one up there on the lathe. Kind of, it's a kind of feeble thing. Huh. I'll do that. Now, which way? Which way? I was recording upside down, maybe? I don't know now. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, Hi, doctor. How you doing? Oh.
Why? You want to spread my chops? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so, Major. No spreading chops today. Boy, sure, they only got two of these left now, so I guess I got most of them, huh? And they're self-reactive. They do produce energy on their own. A little tiny bit, which is intrigues me a bit. What's inside here? But these came out of a substation. And uh, I'm going to put them in series. Series and maybe some in parallel. So... It'll be good to go on that one. Let's see. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, one kick ass spark cap. <laughs> and it's got to be very, very exciting. These are um, AC caps, but I can use them for DC. I know that. I've done that before. A matter of building up voltage, and I'm going to get some insulators. I want to mount these on a metal frame properly and grounded and everything on the case side. So that's going to be awesome to get that all done. Slow process, <coughs> but accumulating high voltage direct current. Kind of like a reservoir to build up a massive amount of energy and let it rip for a second or two. Well, this guy's working great. All of these are working good. It's like odd signals in here, this fellow. That's what I had in the big plant. Oh, yeah, it away. That's what I had in the apartment lab. That and the other one. Plus other things. Put out a very strong signal. As well as the other pieces came from the apartment as well. And over there. You can see them in the TV shows. I'm operating those pieces there. Yeah, let's just zoom in. generators like I, I see them in the old TV shows I'm all over there of course getting another shipment in for fair radio sales Lima Ohio well, I'm trying to think of what else we're getting something from Berkeley pilot stuff from Berkeley And then it's just a matter of time and get it all prepared and organized and working again. Hey, ah, well, you know, you know, you know. Let's check the KVA ratings on these guys, huh? Ooh. Same stuff. Yeah, I need a KVA rating on this fat belt. Mm, we have a. Oh, oh. It's hard to read in this lighting. Mm, UK. Oh, ah, oh, so, so, 2,400 volts each. Excellent. Uh, is the KVA rating faded away or what? Moving around a little more here, huh? Oh, that's no good. <clears throat> Let's 
think it's over here somewhere, I think. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that's not good either, is it? Terrible. Never got this thing to stay anywhere. Damn it, Jim. Maybe that will work. I don't know. Okay, KVA. Hmm. Killer bolt down here. Hmm, lighting. Let's see. Under KVRs, ninety foot point ten. Oh, okay, I got it. This came out of the substation. Hi down there, how you doing? So, the mast and cables. Stuff's getting harder to find, you know. Anyway. So we got that. He's like so. Okay. Always make sure you clean your insulators. You don't want to get a carbon arc going. Big problem. You had a big problem with carbon art, by the way. Oh, I'll finish that tomorrow. Get that motor in the right direction. This is too... I don't know. I'm going to put the other goodies in here, of course. Kick-ass gear. Well, I've seen them up to six feet in diameter on artillery pieces. So I'd be real small artillery piece of that, I guess. <laughs> I do. Well, let's see. Hold on. I think I've got the driving gear for that as well. Okay. The base hand wheel and off to the races we go. up there. I like to get some more substantial racking and I could get it higher up. This is pretty well loaded now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Totally insane. Got that uh, from a dealer for 
I think it was less than a hundred bucks. Some old fart on eBay is uh, selling, trying to sell his stuff for triple the amount of money. These old geezers, you know, they just want to get their currency. Bunch of capitalist pigs. Of course, I'm a capitalist. Piglet. Not a pig, but piglet. I'm a little piglet. Hi! Well, it takes Earth currency to get things, so that's pretty weird. But the overpriced stuff is pretty weird, too. It never sells. It'll sit there forever. Until I make an offer them, I offer them once in a long time. I don't care, you know. Let me know when you want to have a reasonable price, and I might buy it. Yes, I might. There is no price. That's some ridiculous price. And there's good sellers on eBay and bad sellers. If you guys watch X Files, you've probably seen the smoking man, right? He always seems to smoke a half a cigarette. Puts it out, and it's all filmed so intently. I like my Morley's. The smoking man. Barbara, where's my hot chocolate? Barbara! Should I do an in, impro, <laughs> improper posing? I don't think you see what's hanging out there. Nothing much. Well, it's a lot. It is. Oh. We'll go there today now. This would be funny if this was filming upside down because I'm less counter when it's moving the thing around, so who cares? Who cares, YouTube channel? Lamely, get your computer running for Pete's sake. You gotta see these videos. You're watching too much stupid junk on TV or whatever they have these days. God, I made, even made you a couple of videos. Come on, Lily. I made you a Sock Speaks video. Which Lamely loved them and got her laughing and out of her depression. So come on, Lee, get those, get that computer up and running. I'm so lazy. <sighs> no, I didn't suntan today. Unfortunately, it was cloudy. It's cloudy today, so I didn't get a chance to go see Jin Sun. I had other things I got to do as well, which worked out fine. I had to get, test those things I got from the scrapyard. They worked fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doctor. Yeah, doctor. Yeah, doctor. Oh, Doctor, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a new character, doesn't it, coming up? Oh, Doctor, what are you doing, Doctor? <laughs> oh, Doctor. Oh, Doctor. Oh, Doctor, what are you doing now? 
What are you doing now, doctor? Oh, doctor, am I still? Endorsing Harley, they call these kind of situations when I can't done a bit of work. Oh, oh, I should have made a... Uh, did I do that already? I don't know. I thought I did. No, I was going to do that on the energy equivalence at Rene Valley Lewis. I'm going to do that instead of talking like a lunatic. Hmm. Do that in a little bit. Fine books. Upload that, but other people actually have hours going on Facebook. It's unbelievable and high quality. Friend of mine, Becky's doing those things with her boat. Adventures of Kim. Really cool stuff. Really interesting things. And it's hour, hours long videos every day. I guess you can upload as much stuff you can as the fun book. I upload sometimes to fun book videos because you never know when YouTube's going to pull your channel down. You're not right, you little YouTube robots. So, when I went to the scrapyard, of course, I wore my hair like this, but dressed with black trousers. It's socially acceptable. And why not? When in Rome, do what the Romans do, right? <coughs> <laughs> Let's see, one time in Minnesota, the state capital, Nancy was doing some political stuff outside the state capitals, talking and interviewing people, and I just walked up the big long staircase into the Capitol building. Okay, is it anybody in here? And I kind of walked around and around and upstairs to the rotunda, is it, or whatever, and the big halls and rooms and things. I heard something was in session in one of the rooms. Two men were talking and walking around this big round area and then didn't even say hello. They're so engrossed in what they're saying. It's like I'm invisible. That just came popped into my mind because I'm talking about something else that made me free associate to that. Huh. Oh well, I think there was um, security agents as well, but they just ignored me. <coughs> hmm. Okay. Probably just thinking he's a stupid Canadian tourist walking around in circles somewhere up there in the rotunda, or wherever you call that. You know, you can walk. Around. Other secure places I've been in. Oh, the Rand Corporation. And I was on in uh, Los Angeles. It was it SAIC that visited me? It was SAIC. Came to visit and show me samples, took some pictures, and we did a demonstration for them. SAIC. Then how did I get involved with Rand? I was staying at the Huntley Hotel in Los Angeles, the Ngata, and I just walked down the street and saw Rand Corporation, walked right in, and talked to some people, and sent me a whole pile of literature, which I think I still have. That was weird. I'm just like, I'm totally invisible. Like, oh, it's just... This guy here, blah, 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 maybe, <laughs> it's funny how that works out. I'm 
guess they had a sixth sense, no threat person. And then I, uh, been in other locations too. Actually, people are quite friendly. <laughs> had um, lunch with Jack Huck at McDonnell Douglas Aerospace Corporation with Ian one time. He came to visit me in 86. Was it 86 or 85? Vancouver Experiment he did do. It's uploaded on YouTube, by the way. Oh, oh, oh. And other situations. Like, not situations, just my curiosity was like a cat walking around these places. Hmm. Well, it's an insecure location where um, I was with Alex Sharashevsky and George Lysakase and myself were walking around trying to get the security camera and it, the security camera would follow you. We got up to a point where it jammed. <coughs> the guards came out. They called us in and said, oh, just looking around. They didn't do anything. And oh, okay. I forget the name of the outfit. Maybe it was a Canadian aerospace firm. I forget. But anyway, situations like that. Hey. Yeah, it was a Rand Corporation on Main Street. Not too far from the Hunter Hotel. That was my first time I saw LA. Huh. A couple of years ago. Went to the scrapyard way back then. I walked into a gun store and they were showing me good older guns. I don't not into plastic or aluminium guns at all, but old one. They showed me a fifty Browning machine gun and let me have it. Examine it on the floor in the gun shop. Brought back memories of my good collection of those things. Hmm. That's another adventure. Oh. Even breaking into Woodland School in 2004. It was all fenced off. You couldn't go in it. But we got in with Lemily and myself and Corinne and walked spent the whole day examining the whole place, walk out. The security guards came walking down. And I act, put on my stupid act like, oh, I wonder what that place is, Woodland School. I said, what is that? Ooh, it's an old abandoned insane asylum. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? I just walk out. No problem. Other places I've been done that. Uh, a number of them. Secure locations or businesses or something like that. <clears throat> it's like people don't see me, like I'm totally invisible. It even happens to other people. Oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> I know nothing. I am from Bulgaria. I am just touring around the room. I just go on. A stone house on a street, do my peddling vegetables to the people. This is very much been to me. This is very 
different than old country. Of course, I'm imitating Boris, my landlord. Ooh, kind of like my setup in that apartment. Boris, Boris, you be Boris, old country. Don't know what's wrong with North Americans these days. Is nuts. Mr. John. And everybody calls me Mr. John. <coughs> <coughs> I mean, here I am sitting in Wesley Baker's military surplus store. Okay, and on some ammo crates, and I talked to Colleen because Wes was away. Wesley Baker was away. Doing something. I said, it's one of my favorite haunts, Wesley's military surplus. The investigations were very high for Willie Picton, the mass killer in Canada. 70 people killed by him over time. Piggy's Palace. So anyway, I'm sitting on these green boxes right by the counter and then these RCMP officers come walking in slowly, carrying in. So they look at me and they start talking to Colleen. And I'm thinking to myself, should I really be listening to this? This is rather like private, isn't it? Do you know anything about Willie Pitkin and Piggy's Palace and missing women and all this stuff? I'm like an idiot. I'm sitting there looking kind of stupid. Looking around at things in Wesley's store and then I went on for at least 15, 20 minutes. Then they walked out. Colleen, you know, just some stuff about Willie Pitkin. Another time I was with Colleen and the helper guy. The media would come around to the store talking about, well, what do you know about Piggy's Palace to these people, or to the helper? Because he could, well, he went outside and he started talking to him. Colleen took a, a surplus army boot and threw it out <laughs> the door and hit him. Like, don't talk to the media about thinking, oh, this is getting weird. So, that's another little adventure of mine. Huh. Some people, even in the meeting with against Adrian Elliot Stone, because he was bugging Wesley Baker and Colleen, threatening them. I'm in the meeting there, sitting in the back room, listening to the bikers talk about this. We're going to get them. We're going to nail them. We're going to throw them in the river. Adrian Alex, Elliot Stone was a real extortionist, a criminal. He made a website that I didn't want. He profited money off of it. That's how I got to encounter that character. Anyway, so the bikers say, this conversation never happened. And I said, yep, never happened. I don't know anything. So, that's my invisibility act, I guess. How long have I been talking for? It's a long one. It is. Okay, I'm going to go.